Hi, I'm Steve from Trail West Travel. Today we're super excited because we're going to install our Hensley hitch. We got all the parts laid out here and the first thing that we're supposed to do is make sure that we're on level ground. The tow vehicle and the trailer. Check. Ish. <laughs> so the second step is to make sure and secure the stinger in the tow vehicle. So let's do that. It says on there twice to make sure the pin is latched and latched tight. So, check. So the first thing you need to do is to make sure that the hitch box is in a line. And so they have two stickers here. Make sure they're aligned correctly because when you slide it on the stinger, it'll go on there a lot easier. Voila. Now that we have the hitch box on the stinger, we need to make sure and pull these over center latches to, towards the stinger and then secure them in place. And for ours, they're a little too tight. So what you can do with these is loosen them up just by rotating them. If you need them tightened, you can go ahead and do that as well. Just turn it the other way. They suggest when you're putting the over center latches on, if they are too loose or too tight, turn it like we showed you. The right amount of strength is like a pair of vice grips when you clamp them together. Once you have the over center latches in place, you want to make sure and put the pins in place. So this is where we want to make sure and lube the ball liberally it says because this ball is going to be attached to the coupler on the trailer indefinitely so we're just using an ep grease for this red and tacky okay so this is the point where we back the vehicle up to attach the ball to the coupler on the trailer So we bring this coupler down onto the ball and then we'll make sure and secure it in place. And then we pin it. We pin it for life. Pinned. Now we're ready to install the frame brackets. This is what holds the stabilizing bars. We measure 25 and a half inches from the middle of the coupler to the front part of this frame bracket. And that's where we adhere it to the frame. To make this installation easier, I'm just going to loosely fit it. And then I can still slide this frame back and forth until I know exactly where 25 and a half inches is. And then we can tighten it down. And then we can actually drill a hole and adhere it directly to the frame. Now we can take a measure to the front part of that A-frame, 25 and a half inches, so it's clear up here. We're actually going to have to remove this. It's super difficult. <laughs> That's so hard. I don't know if we're going to have time to finish now. <laughs> So remember, this can be plus or minus half inch. So you can be a little bit off of that 25 and a half, but not much. And make sure it is correct because you don't want to drill multiple times into your frame. 
Make sure and torque these U-bolts to the manufacturer's specification. So Steve just told me on the U-bolts that you're supposed to check those after the first 200 miles to make sure that they are still tightened. After that, check them periodically, the U-bolts. Once you have your frame bracket in place, this is when you need to drill into the frame of your uh, trailer in the appropriate holes to insert the self-tapping shear bolt. Let's do it. So there's four holes that you can drill into your frame. The geese are helping us pick. But there's four different holes. You need to choose at least two. We're choosing this one. So for ours, just to make this installation easier, we're gonna remove the propane tanks. The hole that we want to use uh, it might be slightly off if we don't remove these, so it's better to make it right the first time and remove them. When you're drilling into your frame, make sure that you don't hit any cords or anything when you're actually doing the drilling. That would not be a good thing. We run into a problem. Our first, hmm. So we chose to drill into this hole back here and the self-tapping screw does not fit through these holes and we have no way to get this self-tapping bolt screw thing in there. Makes no sense. Well, it's in there, but now we're trying to get it to line up with the holes so that we can get it in. chose a different one, but I don't feel like drilling another hole in the frame. I didn't want to drill this one, but... Oh, broke the screw. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy! Please make me bang my... Knuckles. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <sighs> well, I'll do what I didn't want to do. And this and this.
Let's go, Ina. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can see the whole. Celebrate good times. Come on. It's a celebration. And you got to redo what you already did. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Better than failing. A good life lesson is if you don't give up, you'll never fail. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska, where you start a video in a t-shirt and end up in, in a, a t-shirt and a coat and boots. <laughs> okay, we got 65,000 tools out here. So now we just took the, the mounting pin, this guy. I thought this was called the locking collar. Er, yeah, locking collar off the mounting pin. Mounting pin, locking collar. Take that off and we need to lubricate the mounting pin. You got your red and tacky. <laughs> Get the old red and tacky. It doesn't say liberal. All right, it says to fully release the mounting jack. How you do that is by turning this nut on top of it counterclockwise. So clockwise shortens it and counterclockwise lengthens it. You just watch me mount the jack backwards. The barrel of the jack facing forward. and repeat for the other side. So fully extend the jack. And then we can attach that to the other pin. Barrel forward. So we're attaching the spring bars to the main hitch and we have to grease them right where they go into the hitch because there's a grease zerk in there and if you don't have a grease gun, then you need to make sure and grease that liberally. And if you're a wuss like me, wear gloves. Should be done with the grease, I guess we'll find out. Turn the bottom of the jack so that the three height indicate markers are facing out and visible. Three height. I finished! One, two, three, right? So what are you doing, just putting the jack on the... Yeah, you need the jack on the bottom. You need these three holes showing. And then you need to insert the pin from the inside to the out, and then you put this locking pin in there. So we're going to have to tighten this a little bit to get to line up with the hole where we need it. Right there. The struts are one of the most important components of the Hensley. Failing to install or adjust them properly may impede the system. So raise the hand, raise the handle and slide the locking sleeve back to reveal the square strut nut. Adjust the nut toward the locking sleeve post as far as the thread will allow. Okay, so when assembling this strut assembly, you want this to be further away from the main hitch, and then you want this to be parallel with your frame. You have three different holes here, and so to make ours parallel with the frame, you want the center one. Obviously, this may be different for yours, but that's what ours is. 
and then we got to go assemble the other side. So you lift this sleeve up, pull it apart, and this will be towards the trailer. Now that our struts are on, we gotta detach the stinger from the vehicle. So now that we have the struts assembly on, now we have to adjust those. We removed the hitch from the vehicle, and so now we can adjust those. It says that the Struts being level are very important to uh, specifically handling, so make sure that, the, that they are level. So he's just getting that strut bar turned the right direction so that the handle is up on top of the strut bar. And then we have lost our light, so we are going to have to give it up for today and come back tomorrow because we started it too late in the day. <laughs> So we're back today to finish the job. Yesterday it just got a little too dark. Uh, by the end of it we were putting the uh, strut assembly on and so we got that attached. I just want to do a quick overview of that, make sure we hit some good points on uh, what to do with that and then we'll get into what the strut assembly actually does. So we have the strut assembly on here and we have it detached from the stinger from the vehicle. But when you're installing the strut assembly, it does need to be attached to the tow vehicle. And so just make sure that it's lined up perfectly and those will slide in really easy. What the strut assembly does is it holds this upper unit in place. So when you're traveling down the road, it prevents all the sway in your tow vehicle. And so the proper way to set that up is you got to put tension that stretches that, uh, this bar away from it. So you need to screw this nut towards this sleeve or towards the trailer. And so then we do that on the other side once everything is lined up perpendicular with the A-frame on your trailer. So this is a perfect example of what they talk about in the instructions. So you look at this side and it's a little bit, it's showing more threads than when you look at this other side. Well that means that the frame assembly that I put on is a little bit further back on this side and that's perfectly fine as long as your top unit here is perpendicular with the A-frame of your trailer. And they put a nice little cheater sticker in the middle so you can kind of see where your center is. Yeah. So then to give it the last little bit of turn, you use this and you go about a half a turn just to tighten that up. And then you're done with that. So we'll do that on this side too. Every time you hook the trailer up to your vehicle and you're going to tow with it, you want to make sure and check the tension on that strut assembly. And then just double check that once again this is perpendicular with the A-frame. Okay, so there's three marks on these spring bars, on the jack for the spring bars, and they suggest doing the middle one to start with. What this will do is it will stiffen the ride or loosen the ride. So the middle one should be just be kind of middle of the road. Uh, and so if you want it tighter, you're gonna to go to the bottom one. If you want a little bit looser, you'll go to that one. The middle one's just a starting point. And once you get it on the road, you can really adjust it how you want. You can adjust it along the way. And so if you're gassing up or if you feel like it's a little loose or it's a little tight, you can loosen it. You can pull over or loosen it just while you're on the road. So we'll go ahead and do that. They do give you this handy dandy wrench to do it, but I'm kind of impatient. So I uh, 
figured out that it was a three quarters. And so I'm just gonna use this drill uh, to tighten it up to that point. And then we have to do it to the other side too. So when it's not hooked up to the vehicle, as you can see, it puts it at a downward angle. That's because those spring bars have tension on them. And so that'll distribute the weight to the tow vehicle. So you would only tighten those when you actually have it hooked up to the vehicle. So we'll go over a process of actually hooking this up to the vehicle and we'll cover that at that point in time but this does complete the installation process of the hensley hitch and i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or comments please comment below uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of our adventures check out our channel please subscribe and we'll see you on the trail and it's raining ah! This is Dorky, reading the instructions. What kind of a man are you? <laughs> Don't put that in there. <laughs> in? It does, doesn't it? <laughs> It'll be smarter than the over center latch, huh? Or just have a smart light. Those come in handy too. Tell me where you can find one. At the front of the main hitch assembly, rotate the over center latch assembly outward and backward toward the main hitch assembly. <laughs> Already. Okay. Google Translate. <laughs> but here, I'll be your Google Translate. Okay. Hey. Wow. Say pretty heavy. That doesn't look like liberal to me. Think about it, if the kids were gonna do it. How much would the kids put on there? <laughs> Our children are liberals. <laughs>